Justin Chenette is a student at Thornton Academy, and Honor Wilkinson attends Callis High School. They are the first youth members ever to sit on Maine's Board of Education. We count in terms of our voice, and we have to have that opinion on the State Board of Education. This is truly a historic, historic time for us and a great opportunity to represent the youth voice on the State Board of Education. It sends a clear message to the youth all across the state that their voice and opinion matters. There are several issues that I believe that need to be addressed. There are four that are on the top of my priority list. Number one, we need to have voter registration drives in every high school across the state. The theme for Thornton Academy is preparing students for a changing world. Part of the job of educators is to prepare students to be an active and engaged citizen out in the real world. We can achieve this by not only registering students to vote, but also inform them on the issues, the candidates, and the referendums on the ballot and in the election. Young people must become aware and get involved in the society and the world in which they live. Number two, drug prevention needs to be a top priority. I had the distinct opportunity to speak with York County Sheriff Maurice Willette about putting DARE programs into the schools. DARE stands for Drug and Alcohol Resistance Education. He informed me that there is no allocation of funds for him to place an officer into the schools to teach drug prevention. I have a solution. Why not utilize what we already have? Why not utilize the resource officers, health teachers, or nurses who are already in the schools to carry out some type of drug prevention program? Number three, in this time of budget cuts and economic distress, arguably a recession, we must understand that education is our future. The moment we make cuts in education, we are actually making cuts in our future, and that's something we really can't afford to do. Instead, we need to be investing in our education system, in particular technology. The more technologically advanced our society becomes, the harder and harder it will be for schools to catch up. I believe in the Channel One program, which would essentially put a TV in every classroom as long as we run a 12-minute news program. I believe this is a win-win scenario. On one hand, we're making an investment in technology at no cost to us. And on the other hand, we're getting students aware of what's going on in the world around them. In addition, educators get an additional teaching tool in their arsenal for learning. And finally, number four, as a State Board of Education member, I would strongly recommend to you as a whole to place at least one student member on your board. Let's talk a little bit about the Maine State Board of Education. Did you, I mean, not many high school juniors sit around saying, wow, I'd like to do that. How did it happen? Well, it actually began in October of 2007 when I interviewed Maine Commissioner of Education, Susan Gendron, and she talked about the opportunity after the interview and said, would you be interested in being a part of this new program that we have? And I said, I'll look into it. Uh, I had three days to get in my application. The deadline was readily approaching, so I was a little nervous at first, but I got it in. There was letters of recommendation, there was application materials, but I did get it in, and then the waiting period started. Do you think that they treat you seriously, treat you as an equal? Well, we don't have the right to vote, but we do have our voice. There are challenges with that because we don't have the leverage uh, to what we say in order to uh, make a real impact. I do think the structure is still uh, need to be improved uh, in moving forward and bringing the youth voice on further but it's a step in the right direction. So I was really excited starting off with the opportunity and I was filled with the sense of hope and optimism for change that Barack Obama instilled during his campaign for president. That I was able to, I was going to be able to actually create change and actually get my hands in educational policy. The problem is I'm leaving the opportunity really discouraged with the political system and really disappointed that the bureaucratic process really triumphed over actually solving real issues because we're only given a voice. We don't have a vote. 
which at first I was like, okay, that's okay. I can, I can deal with that because I can utilize my voice in an appropriate manner to make my voice heard. The problem is there have been a number of individuals that have tried to suppress our voice, and that's the only thing we have. So it's been disappointing that I haven't been able to actually get in there and do something about the education problem. No. Um, and as a young person, that's not what I want to hear. I don't want to hear that here's this opportunity for students to get involved, and then they're going to take it away from us by not, not only not giving us a right to vote, but taking away our voice, which was the only thing that we had. Um, because I'm not going to say it's just a photo op, but um, it's definitely been an eye-opening experience to see the, the, the manipulation and the power plays that go on in Augusta. So um, I've advocated on a number of issues, though. And I really am proud of some of the things that I've talked about, including stronger civic engagement curriculum. Mm -hmm. I think it's critically important that we get our young people civically engaged. Um, and I'll give you a prime example of why that's important. Uh, this past year, as a senior, I took a political science course at Thornton Academy. Uh, it was the first time in my 12 years of public education that we actually went in depth in our government and how um, our political system operates. Um, and the issue there was it was a voluntary course. And about only 40 students out of a class of 350 took the course. So what's going to happen to those 300 plus students that are not going to have that same background in our government, in our, edu in our you know, political system, than those 40 students? What's going to happen to them? They're going to turn that magic number of 18 when they're given that responsibility to vote, and they're not going to have a clue. And that's the bread and butter of our democracy, is having a well-informed, uh, you know, citizenry and that they're civically engaged. And so uh, I think at the curriculum level, we need to do a better job in getting them civically engaged, whether it be a mandatory political science course or it be, you know, uh, having them volunteer with a campaign and obtaining credit, whatever we want to discuss, but we need to come to the table and figure out a way to do that. Uh, and so when I brought up this issue on the Main State Board of Education, the first thing they said was, let's pass the buck. Let's figure out a way to give this to somebody else. We don't handle that issue. Mm -hmm. They suggested the Secretary of State. So I talked with the Secretary of State, and uh, he said that they try to reach out to the Department of Education several times over the years, and that connection really never came about. So um, the kind of communication kind of frayed. So, um, what we really need to do on the Main State Board of Education is understand that we have to apply 21st century thinking to 21st century problems. We can't apply an old strategy to a new scenario. And maybe that's because there are more seasoned individuals on the board, and that's great that we have experience, but there is a time and place for positive change and for young people to come up and be able to contribute in a positive way. Did you feel that they may have heard you but never listened? Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Um, you know, I, I can talk the talk, but then it goes in one ear, not the other. Because they didn't like when I brought up issues. That was a no-no for some reason, right. even though that's why we were brought on board. Okay. And so during the meetings, we were basically twiddling our thumbs because we can't vote. And so when I, I, I kind of got uh, really upset with that, so I said, well, I'm going to bring up some issues during my board member report, which is usually designated to figure out we're going to sing kumbaya around the table saying what events that we attended versus talking about what's really important in our education system. So I decided to bring up some issues. And the first issue that I brought up on the board was um, raising the alarm when a number of educators breach ethical standards around the cliff vote. That uh, It was a big debate up in Augusta surrounding it. The MEA put out a bulletin, a newsletter out to the teachers and signaled out to representative, Representative Fisher and Representative Valentino, that they voted against granting increased uh, you know, uh, retirement benefits to teachers. And they singled those two out. And then as an effect, we have a number of educators that sent threatening messages to those representatives based upon that newsletter. So uh -huh. I rose the alarm about it. And their thing, their basically, their, their viewpoint was, well, Justin, you're attacking teachers. That's a no-no. You can't attack teachers. Even though there was a select number that was do doing this, I said, this is a big issue. We need to make a public statement saying we're going to distance ourselves from that behavior, but we understand why they're upset. But they're not going to even do that. That's what was really disconcerting to me is they're not willing to take on that leadership that's designated in the mission statement of the Maine State Board of Education. It says to provide educational leadership. Where is the educational leadership taking place when they're going to take the back seat to the issues that plague our education? There's this new piece of legislation that's being proposed that would dissolve the Maine State Board of Education. And when I first read it, I was really excited because I really think that 
the duties and responsibilities of what they're currently doing on this on the state level with the Board of Education could be easily disbanded into the Department of Education because basically what they do is they reform teacher certification, they approve teacher certification, um, they improve language in school construction, they approve school construction projects. Okay. Basically that's the bread and butter. Everything else kind of dissolves. Um, so that could be easily done in the department and spread out. So I definitely support something to either change their responsibilities to where they have increased responsibility over educational policy or they disband it into the department because there's no reason to keep this board afloat when they're not going to solve the issues at hand or at least provide leadership on advocacy wise of pointing out to the individuals that do handle those issues to say hey here's this issue regarding drug prevention in our schools here's this issue regarding civic engagement or teachers breaching ethical standards you either solve it or we'll take it upon ourselves to solve it but none of that's taking place and that was really disappointing as a young person to see our political system at work.